Hello there, my fellow frontiersmen, and welcome back to some Warhammer 40k lore. Today's topic is a bit of a latecomer to the party, since I probably should have done it way before starting one of my more recent series. I am referring, of course, to our Xenos Bestiary series. Because this topic, the Corona's Expanse, is actually the home of many of the creatures we describe in those episodes. But better late than never, I say. Now, the Coronas Expanse is obviously a huge place, with a lot of lore on its planets, creatures and other stuff. So in this episode I just wanted to give it a proper intro, if you will. Of course, the Coronas Bestiary book also helped a lot in this regard. So without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Coronas Expanse is home to a great many planets which have been settled by humanity, to various degrees of civilization. As it is technically beyond the Imperium, it exists in a lawless state, where the only rule is what Bolter and Lands can make, and property is held only for as long as it can be aggressively defended. Xenos races roam freely, preying upon humanity and denying their rightful destiny to rule the Void. Even by Imperial standards, this is a very dangerous region, yet for a rogue trader, its open nature makes it ripe for exploitation and profit. Those who would make their means in the Expanse will have to deal with more than these threats though. The Expanse is filled with all kinds of bestial creatures, and while these do not present the same kind of danger as hostile Xenos, they are no less hazardous. Each one possesses new perils for an explorer, as unique as the worlds they occupy. Many offer tremendous potential for profit and glory, often of a personal nature, impossible when dealing with merchant trading or combat in the void. Every planet across the Imperium offers its own range of flora and fauna peculiar to that habitat, along with those breeds previously imported by design or accident. As humanity spreads its dominion across the planet, these life forms often become beaten down into manageable forms, the better to serve their new masters. The Corona's Expanse, however, knows no masters. Much of the region is still unexplored, and humanity has only properly surveyed and settled a fraction of its worlds. New planets are uncovered almost on a daily basis, each filled with new life forms which offer the possibility for profit and ruin both usually in equal measure. These newly discovered worlds have not seen human presence for millennia, if ever. Or worse, they have only known the foul touch of Xenos which disturb their natural biology. Here, animals, plants and things as yet unclassified dominate, despite the best efforts of humanity to eradicate them or simply slow their growth. Those planets more hostile to human life are termed death worlds, these usually host countless horrific species, each aggressively evolved to survive against their environment and fellow life forms, all of which are often lethal to the extreme. These can range from nearly invisible insects which silently implant toxic eggs in mammoth monsters larger than imperial tanks, which will simply swallow anything that fits in their enormous maw. Plant life can also show extreme lethality with quick-moving carnivorous flora or fungal spores which can kill in moments. Generally, the life on these worlds is very dangerous, although some offer threats of a more subtle nature that only careful analysis from the Magos biologist researchers can uncover. Even the worlds assumed to be fully under control, however, may end up offering dreadful new surprises. Settlers, miners, researchers, agritoilers, and often others disturb hidden creatures, or bring forth long slumbering beasts from what they thought were relatively safe environments. The implantation of imperial manufactorums and hydroponic bastions into some biospheres can also result in the introduction of chemical effluent and other sewage, creating monstrous mutations and causing the flora to erupt in deadly new variations. Other creatures seem to have been deliberately introduced onto certain planets, in what could be attempts to hinder efforts from competing rogue traders or merchant interests. Radical xenologists speculate that specially bred beasts have been implanted onto some native biospheres for sport or other less commercial reasons as well, including simply to eliminate humans from a planet. 
Certainly, the introduction of immature megafauna or even especially carnivorous beasts into a new environment can be devastating. In some instances, these new threats can destroy a successful mining operation or devastate a thriving colony. More often though, they simply become part of the local living conditions, with workers constantly on the guard against bestial invasions or plant infestations. As long as the planet stays profitable, even with the additional cost for such defenses, no rogue trader would countenance shutting down a venture for just a few local problems. Despite the dangers such Xenos creatures pose, to be a rogue trader is to deal with the unknown and the alien, and the Coronas Expanse has plenty of both. Most would not even have it the other way, and pride themselves in their ability to properly confront and profit from these encounters. Exploration is where new profits can be found. Those that stagnate into safe and easy trading patterns in the expanse will not last long, since here the more aggressive develop greater riches. Across the expanse there are countless examples where hazardous life forms have been turned into increased revenue, even if just as new attractions in illicit beast houses. The nobility of the Calixis sector has an insatiable appetite for unique creatures from the region, as the enticing degree of danger makes them even more attractive, and many explorers make handsome livelihoods supplying the demand. Some even prefer this to the cold trade, as the hazards are usually more obvious and there is less danger from the Inquisition or slighted Xenos races. Some explorers even seek out the perils to test themselves against the expanse itself. In a place and a calling where one can die at a moment's notice from attacking Xenos, failing technology, or other hazards too many to list, such a distilled confrontation is maybe a welcome change. Here the outcome comes down to an individual and their skills. The only view most have of these Xenos creatures might be behind plasteel barriers or jaded spire parties or at the bottom of a beast house fighting pit and they can never know the exhilaration of combating these creatures in the wild. Many call this behavior reckless or even suicidal, but it is well known that wearing the newly tanned skin of an exotic creature when striding across Port Wonder is usually enough for many rounds of free drinks at a local tavern. Humanity faces a lot of other dangers in the Corona's expanse. Navigation alone is a great hazard, especially in simply reaching the area. The clearest threats though are those posed by other sentient races, especially those who are also capable of void travel, as they can threaten humans on worlds other than their own. The faithful of the Adeptus Ministorum offer a simple solution to the concern, exterminate all forms of alien life and any traces of their existence, all for the glory of the God Emperor. However, this is barely ever practical or even possible as the expanse exists outside the boundaries of Imperial Dominion. Even within Imperial space, many Xenos races pose constant threats to humanity, and in the lawless expanse they are even more dangerous. Here the Xenos can roam at will, spreading their unholy influence across the stars. Many rogue traders find this situation quite to their liking. Where there are no laws or Imperial jurisdiction, there is great opportunity for profit. Despite the official prescriptions against such things, there is a huge appetite for Xeno's knowledge and technology in the Calixis sector, and plenty who will pay handsomely to quench these desires. Within the dangerous reaches of the expanse, few things are more prized, for good or for ill, despite the huge risk involved. Such Xenotech is highly sought after in the sector by heretical xenographers, jaded spire nobility, or the Xenos agents, radical factions of the Mechanicus, like the Disciples of Thule, and many, many others for many, many reasons. The purposes they are desired for can only be speculated upon. However, no loyal servant of the Emperor would dare traffic in such innately corrupt and unholy merchandise. Possession of Xenotech is heavily prescribed, often to a lethal degree, and so is the trading that occurs through the channels of the cold trade. Many a respectable tavern or trading post on Port Wonder is merely a front for this highly lucrative business, serving as the middle ground for rogue traders bringing these illicit goods into the sector and the smugglers who then transport the items to the buyers. 
Some Xenos of the Expanse frequently deal with humanity, either willingly or unwillingly. And despite some tales of combative misunderstandings, they are known more for their commercial dealings rather than their military conflicts. Many rogue traders commission the crude as mercenaries, while others cautiously hold the Strixes as trading partners and sources of esoteric information. Such dealings have led to the rise of many successful dynasties, but have also been the ruination of many more. Those who forget that the alien always remains alien, and that the Xenos are at their core a threat to humanity, rarely ever live to regret their error. The rogue traders who do maintain contact with Xenos cultures run the risk of unwanted attention from the Inquisition. Other, more devout rogue traders are apt only to deal with Xenos through the torpedo ports of their vessel. These militants prowl the warp routes of the Expanse, preying on the Xenos they can find and overwhelm and collecting information on others for future assaults. The latter are usually joint ventures with a house's war fleet and segments of the Imperial Navy, brought specifically into the Expanse for the battle. To these rogue traders, for every Xenos destroyed in the Expanse, they move one step closer to becoming a truly civilized region. Not all the Xenos go quietly into the Void's embrace, though. Many conflicts between humanity and other Xenos races have been fought in the Expanse. The engagements are often bloody and brutal affairs, with neither side asking or giving quarter. Typical of these is one of the Expanse's first recorded battles between man and Xenos, said to have occurred in 152 M41, close to the world of Foulstone. Imperial history say that there, the treacherous Eldar ambushed a small fleet led by rogue trader Sinbar Lockhart. These crow spirits, as they call themselves, managed to destroy nearly a dozen vessels of House Lockhart's fleet. The house was then crippled, and from that day onward, Lockhart became obsessed with eradicating the Eldar from the galaxy. The Eldar were just one of the many hostile races in the Expanse, though. Some of these Xeno civilizations have been encountered in other areas of the galaxy, although their behavior elsewhere cannot be taken as typical for those dwelling in the Expanse. Several of the races here are thought to be unique to the region, such as the mindlessly savage Rak Gol, although that is still pure conjecture from Calixian xenobiologists, who are, for the most part, simply thankful that the menaces are on the other side of the Maw. Those who regularly truck with Xenos believe that they comprehend the dangers they face in each encounter. The wisest know that this knowledge is forever beyond them. It is these unknown dangers which are maybe the greatest threat. Some whisper that even long-dead races like the Yuvath still haunt uncharted areas of the Expanse, awaiting their time to reclaim their dominion. None can gainsay this, for the Expanse is full of such dark areas which are forever bereft of the Emperor's light. And this, my friends, has been the overview and hopefully useful introduction to the infamous Corona's Expanse for today. An exotic and dangerous region of the galaxy to be certain, but one full of opportunity too, at least for some. Fun fact, we have actually been talking about planets of this region for a very long time now. So if you ever visit or revisit maybe some of my Imperial Planets episodes, you might notice that some of these planets are actually in this area. Anyway, what about you? What are your thoughts on the Corona's Expanse? Anything you'd like to add to this intro, or any thoughts about it in general? Feel free to share them in the comments below. If you found the episode informative, do consider leaving a like, share, and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and the Emperor protects.